you say that you don't need a man, but let's be clear, you don't need a man maybe for your financial support yes. or for that physical support since the girl can change a tire and, mm -hmm. and change and some brakes. Brace. That's but crazy. But that <laughs> emotional support of a man, mm -hmm. mm. no girlfriend can feel it. Yeah. No, a man can't fulfill that emotional support from your girlfriends yeah. and your family. Mm -hmm. That love, each of those love pockets are different. Mm -hmm. And that love pocket from a man, mm -hmm. you do need that. Welcome to this episode of Keep It Positive, sweetie. I'm Crystal Renee Hazlett, and today I have with me my dear, dear, dear friend, Kiana Watson. Hi. <laughs> Y'all, we got Kiana Watson on the sofa. Oh my goodness, I've been trying to get you here. You're so busy. Yes. So thank you for, even today, you came in on the phone. <laughs> Honey, it's coming still, in hot. Closing deals. <laughs> always, always, thank you for having of me. Of course. It is such a great vibe with you always. Yes. So I look forward to us having a like a chat like we always like do. we always yes. do listen we always make time for each other take yes. you like okay girl we gotta get on the calendar yes yes because we're so busy yeah. so that's one thing i love about you you're so um you're so committed to making sure that you have time with your girls absolutely i love that and it's like we go through our calendar mm -hmm. have you ever seen that meme that says you know look at two people in business and all they do is check their calendars for their availability <laughs> it may take us about an hour but we come up with a date and time we do. and we stick to it and yeah. i love that me too yes. me too because you'll be like what about this and i'm like no that don't work what about this no that don't work you're like, all right, what about this one? You're like, that one works. Yes. You're like, all right, this is it. And I like the intentionality because like yeah. when we get with each other, we try to not touch our phones mm -hmm. or not be on our phones so we can really engage and connect in that time. Yeah. And it's just a perfect, it's always a perfect setting for us. So yeah, yeah. yeah. you're a good friend. You are too. Yes. I love you. <laughs> um, when I think about you, Kian, I always start the show with a song or a quote. And when I think about you, um, I think about how you are so this what you see is what you get like you there's no fakeness about you you're very matter of fact and the quote that comes to mind is find out who you are and do it on purpose oh i love that yeah I and mean, every like I, I really feel like you're one of my friends where every day you wake up you wake up with purpose absolutely and you're one of the most go-getter women i know <laughs> yes <laughs> which is why today we're going to talk about can the alpha woman have it all hmm. you know because i know for me as an alpha woman I have gotten to a point where I say, well, maybe I can't have it all, you know, because yeah. in my life, love, that one area always seems to kind of fall short. Right. You got your list and you're like, well, I got this, I got that, I got that. All right, Lord, I got everything else. Where is the man? <laughs> Where's Where is the, the love? Um, so I thought you were the perfect person to bring on. Absolutely. You are just so amazing. And we can talk, I know we can talk about this forever, right? <laughs> Let me start by saying this. I think when people hear the word alpha, mm -hmm. I want any male that's hearing this does not mean non-feminine. Mm -hmm. All right. Alpha mm -hmm. means leader. Yeah. Alpha means someone that is in charge. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that this person is walking around with masculine energy. And I feel like that's the immediate thing that a man thinks when you say alpha anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I want to debunk that immediately. Yes. Because... As I navigate my business, mm -hmm. you know, I am in a male dominated field, you know, running a real estate brokerage and doing this, all the other things I do. Yeah. But when I come home, I don't want to, I want to be feminine. I want to mm -hmm. be soft. I yes. want to be able to have someone tell me mm -hmm. what we're having for dinner or what the plans are. Make plans yes. and let me just w walk into that soft energy. Mm -hmm. So an alpha female is someone that definitely dominates in their life, in their world. And I think even in your personal life, mm -hmm. you want to, you have you have a direction you want to take it, yeah. but that doesn't necessarily mean you won't allow a person to leave you. Absolutely, you know? yeah, that's so true. And um, let's take, like having it all, right? Mm -hmm. I think that that was, I think it's such a profound statement, right? Yeah. This year has been a very rocky year for me in my personal life right mm -hmm. and I said if I was going to talk about this with anybody I was listening to a sermon and it said y'all have these public relationships mm. and you want everybody to fall in love with you when really you're sharing the highlight reel of your life right wow and then when something devastating happens you get quiet you mm -hmm. close up mm -hmm. 
And I think that, you know, it does, it, everyone's looking like, now you don't want to tell us what happened. Right, you didn't share everything else. <laughs> you know, you shared everything else. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I'll, I'll start off with the immediate thing. I think that we all have to have time to process before we share. Absolutely. You know, and I think in the world of social media, I think that we have to be careful with how we share mm -hmm. because there's more people involved than just the two people or the nosy people that mm -hmm. want to be nosy, yep. or the people that could be praying and cheering you on. Sometimes yeah. you have to say, this is an app. Mm -hmm. My real life has to matter first. Let me yes. figure, let me digest this and take my time and work through this in mm -hmm. my real life, and now I can publicly address it, yeah. right? So can we have it all? I'm gonna be, I don't think so. Wow. Not at the same time. I don't think that you can have it all at mm -hmm. the same time. Mm -hmm. Wow. I don't think you can have it all at the same time. Why do you Why do you think that? Because, because I know you have way more experience in this yeah, area absolutely. than I do. So I'm definitely curious because I I want these answers myself. Yeah, I think that when I look at, I work with a lot of women that are married and they also have children and they want to have these incredible careers. Yeah. And when I look at my career, I don't have children. I have a dog. Mm -hmm. And when... I was married and I and in that situation it felt supportive mm -hmm. so I was able to just focus on my work yes and just stay focused on my work mm -hmm. and by doing that you know I would say this year with the challenges I faced in my relationship I feel like a lot of that come came because I was too busy Wow. and you know as a woman when you're going around and you know, I'm on these stages, like yeah. you attended, uh, you at gracefully came to one of my <laughs> online training events, yes. right? And you saw firsthand, it's like, I'm standing in line, I'm taking pictures for mm -hmm. an hour. Yeah. And the person you're with, it's like, at that time, they're no longer that person's name. They become the wife of that, the husband of that person. Ooh. Right? I've had people say that yeah. in my prior relationship. They were mm. like, oh, you are Kiana's husband. Wow. Like, well, almost like he loses identity. They lose their identity. Yeah. And, it's n and it's not what you do as a person. Mm -mm. It's just that you have this notoriety and you're yeah. growing and you're ascending. And, you know, I, I don't know about you, but when mm. I'm laser focused on a goal, I don't see anything else. I'm tunnel vision to right? the fullest. <laughs> no, literally, it's bad. <laughs> and so when you when you don't see anything else, you can feel like everything is great around you. Yeah. And unless someone verbally t pulls you to the side and say, "Listen, I'm not happy here," mm -hmm. which most men don't. Yeah. Right. They, they want you to feel them or see them. Mm -hmm. Right. They want you to see how they feel. Or you should be in tune with me. Wow. So if nobody's pulling you to the side and you think everything is great. And you wake up like, oh, it's not. Oh wow, I, and you know, and you, and the first thing I did when I, when I, when I rec recognized, I'm like, my relationship is in trouble, right? Mm -hmm. I looked at my, I went through my life. Yeah. I went through my phone. I went through my archive stories. My art. I was mm -hmm. like, what was I doing on this day? What have I been doing for the last yeah. couple years? Getting on planes, speaking on panels, selling wow. houses, working from sun up to sundown, going to all the big stuff, mm -hmm. right? I have my person with me, so I yeah. think, well, you're with me, you're with me. Mm -hmm. But they're not really with, with you, you because oh that's not God. intimate time. Those are, that's your stage time. Think about that. When we're at events, oh my I, and I love everybody yeah. that loves me. I love y'all back. Yeah. But when we're at these events, that's, the, that's stage time. Yeah. That's not intimate time. It's not, not with your person. It's not. Wow. And um, so I do think that when you are building, mm -hmm. whatever you're building, a career, mm -hmm. As a woman, yeah, I do not think you can have it all at one time. You're going to have to decide mm. what what's most important to you. Yeah, yeah. What um, in that moment when you said you realized my relationship is in trouble, um, what were some of those hard conversations that you had to have? Because a lot of you said a lot of times men are not going to tell you, "Hey, oh, yeah. this is what I need. You need to be in tune with me." And I, I think a lot of women do that too. Yeah. We sit around, we're like, "You should just know." Yes. You know. Yes. And um communicating is so like important in relationships. Absolutely. What was that moment like and what were some of those hard conversations where you were like, even had to look within self to say, mm -hmm. oh, dang, when well, you said you went through the, the calendar, you went through your Instagram, like where was I like, oh, I really have just been focused on my work. Yeah. What were some of those conversations like? For me, the when I started to look through my schedule and I'm mm -hmm. adding up these timelines and I'm, you know, I'm obsessive with everything. <laughs> so whatever it, whatever it is, I became obsessed with it. Yeah. And I said to myself, I was too busy. Mm. I was too busy um, focusing on what I wanted to gain. Mm -hmm. I just now became intentional, even with my friendships. Yeah. Because I was too busy focusing on building my career. And I'm like, 
okay, well, they see what I'm doing. They mm -hmm. can wait. Yeah. So that hard conversation was, is if you were on the other side, if you were on the receiving end of this, mm -hmm. how would you have handled it? Mm -hmm. Would you have felt neglected? Yeah. And when I asked myself those questions, the only difference is I would have felt neglected, but I would have communicated that neglect. Exactly. I would have mm -hmm. communicated it. I wouldn't have let it fester. Yeah. But that's because of, it's a level of communication that I have and mm -hmm. maturity that I have about mm -hmm. life and change. Yeah. But I would have absolutely felt neglected, though. Mm -hmm. I would have. So I, I asked myself that hard question. Yeah. Um, we've been in therapy. Mm -hmm. We talked through it. And what it comes down to is you grow. Yeah. I was in a 10 year marriage. Mm -hmm. You grow and you change as a person when you're with somebody. Mm -hmm. But if they are only remembering who you were and they don't want to grow and they don't want to see you grow into this person because this person is no longer as available, mm -hmm. as catering, as attentive. Yeah. So it's not that they don't want you to ascend. They don't want you to go away from them. Yeah, because you know? it's almost inevitable mm -hmm. as you continue to ascend. Correct you're getting further away. And if either they're going to have to choose to be supportive and be your biggest cheerleader yes. or they're going to feel that insecurity and neglect. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I think I know that's what happened mm -hmm. in my relationship. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, when I look at other women and they're yeah. married or they're <laughs> in a relationship or they have a kid, I see that you, they choose, they work less. Yeah, no, absolutely. They spend more time with their, their children. Mm -hmm. They spend more time with their husband. That is why when you think about it, you know, as women, we started this soft girl era. You know how we started this soft girl mm -hmm. era? Because even me, how I am in this space I am today, yeah. I don't want to work as hard as I work to build. Now that me I'm neither. Built, I want to I want to be able to enjoy yes. what I've built. Mm -hmm. And now I want someone to take control. That's why yeah. I do feel like gender roles, mm -hmm. even though they're they're hybrid a little. Yeah. There should they should still be separate because I do recognize that women we're not designed to work hard forever. It mm -hmm. doesn't work well for our mental. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work well for our physical bodies. Mm -hmm. And um, I do think that when you're looking at having a relationship, yeah, and you are building a career, I built a very I built a great career. I have no I, and I say this all the time. I don't have any gr regrets mm -hmm. about building my career, mm -hmm. but I wish <clears throat> that I would have been able to go back and say, OK, let me pay a little bit more attention. Yeah. Um, even though I didn't get the proper communication. Right. Right. You know, um, I want to know what that process was like internally for you, because I feel like I saw the whole thing play out, mm -hmm. um, how you got to the point of doing the self-reflection and realizing, OK, these are the things that I did to play a part in this, but I'm not excusing the behavior that he did. Absolutely. Um, a lot of that is journaling. Mm. I started to journal mm -hmm. every single morning. I wrote down my thoughts, mm -hmm. um, doing the research on my life yeah. and saying, OK, this is what your focus was on. Right mm -hmm. now, person may have never said anything or may not have complained and didn't yeah. really tell you mm -hmm. their feelings. But as a person, would yeah. you want that done to you? And then when I thought about it, I'm like, I'm mm -hmm. not excusing the behavior, but mm -hmm. I'm taking accountability because as I progress in this life, I have not given up on love. Mm -hmm. I believe in partnership. I believe in the sanctity of marriage. I believe that you want to have that one person that is your person. Yeah. And because I've experienced it and how beautiful it can feel, mm -hmm. I don't want to block it again. Yeah. And I want to be able to recognize the signs within myself mm -hmm. and what I'm doing if I ever get back in a relationship and position someone the wrong way. Right. Right. So I can take accountability for my actions by mm -hmm. saying I did, I made these decisions mm -hmm. and I don't, I'm moving forward. This is the difference, mm -hmm. but I don't excuse what you did. Yeah. So to not excuse what you did, you got to go through your own healing. Yeah. That means your own therapy. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we can go to church, but we need both. We need therapy and church. Let's yes. mix it together. It's a combination. Mm -hmm. And then we need to be able to elo eloquently communicate our thoughts. Yeah. So that's how you can have accountability mm -hmm. without excusing. Yeah. Because you're watching the person do the hard work yes. while you're doing the hard work mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Oh, that's good. And that's powerful. I've noticed, and I, I know we talk about everything. Yeah. Um, but one thing I noticed is that this um, situation has brought you both closer to God. Absolutely. Um, you started the year 
coming to church, you're like, I'm in church. Yes. And um, with everything that's going on, that's the one thing that neither one of you have veered from. Yes. It's al almost brought you closer to God. Yes, You know, um, What has that walk been like? And even just growing closer to God and even helping you. Because I, I think sometimes when we're not in tune with God, yes. um, it's easy for us to just push people away. Oh, it is. But when we've learned the grace of God, then we start to look inward and see through people through God's eyes. What has that process been like for you guys? The process has been difficult, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because what happens is as much as you want to walk with God and you're saying that God is walking with me, we mm -hmm. live on this earth mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we're dealing with the adversity of other people's opinions. Yeah. And then we have to look in the mirror and we have to deal with our own egos, mm -hmm. yeah. our own pride. Yeah. And it has been a very difficult walk. Mm -hmm. And as I always say, God will do exceedingly and abundantly. Mm -hmm. You know, I always talk talk that verse to myself because I'm like, he can, he can, he's a healer. He, he, it, he can, he is. if I want this, if I truly mm -hmm. want to work through it, if mm -hmm. we're willing to do the work, eventually it will happen. Yeah. But I'm in a place where I want to make sure I've done the work yeah. because I don't feel like you can hear God if you are not doing the work. You can't. Because obviously sometimes we want what we want so bad mm -hmm. and maybe God doesn't want that for you. Yeah. You know, so, oh, I've been there. You know, and it's like we want it so bad. We want to we want to put God's scriptures mm -hmm. on our own decisions <laughs> because we want it so bad. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a human. Uh -huh. Do I want my life where I'm like, yeah, this is my man, my man, my <laughs> man. It's good. Look at this yes. picture, y'all. We just took a trip. <laughs> like, I, I want that. Yeah. You know, I want what I thought I had. Yeah. I want that Ooh. back. So as bad as I want it back, I know that it's I'm in a season that yeah. I need to hear God mm -hmm. and I want God to speak through me, speak yeah. through him. And we'll know. Mm -hmm. We will know if we decide to walk this path again, that it is the right path and God is in the center of it. Yeah, you know? that's beautiful. Um, I remember um, your husband made it public. Yeah. that um, he had done something yeah. and you woke up, you didn't even know he was going to do it. No. What was that like when you wake up no. in the morning now, like, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> I woke up, I said, Err. I said, Wait, what? this is what we do it. Um, what was that like when you wake up, you know what I'm saying? And you're like, oh, wow, he's made this public now, you know, not <clears throat> giving details, but like he let it be known that he had done something wrong. This is the thing. Mm -hmm. I think for me, I was so, I was so blindsided yeah. and angry. I was both. So I was blindsided and angry about what took place. Yeah. And so as I'm feeling like, forget this, this is over forever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're never going to talk again. Yeah. You know, I had um, everybody, if you have Instagram, it's called Close Friends. And yeah. then you have a subscription. Yes. So I had a subscription that we started when mm -hmm. we uh, went on our 10 year anniversary trip. And I'm yes. like, well, I'm going to share it in my subscriptions. Yeah. Like, well, you know, you're going to pay for this. Pay, you're going to pay to see this content, <laughs> right? We're in St. Bart's. Right. And um, this trip. I kept it, but I never would go back in it. So I was like, I'm on this healing journey. I'm going to go on my subscription. I'm going to tell them, hey, Anthony did these things mm -hmm. and he did these things and um you know I'm gonna take you guys on my healing journey and blah 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 yeah and this was like I was in the middle of the funk of it like I'm gonna show them I'm back outside mm -hmm. I'm gonna make more money sell more houses yes. build more houses like I'm <laughs> I feel like you know like the green gyre I'm, I'm right. just like that yeah and then <laughs> the dust settled mm -hmm. things calmed down a little bit yeah and I said you know, it just something hit me one day. I remember I told you, I said, mm -hmm. I don't want to close friends and I don't want to subscribe. Yep, you sure did. My life is not up for sale. Mm. And I deleted my subscribers. I deleted close friends because mm -hmm. I feel like if I can't post it freely, then mm -hmm. I shouldn't be posting it. Wow. Right. And when I did that, mm -hmm. this was before him and I even decided to talk again or even talked about reconciliation. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, of course, a few people caught wind of that video and you know yeah. how bad news spreads fast yes. and you're doing this to Kiana, you mm -hmm. did that. And I think it was so many opinions coming at him, right? Mm. And here we are, you know, trying our best. Like yes. we're going to church, we're trying our best. Mm -hmm. He's talking to my mom, yeah. you know, and I think he felt the need to just say, with all this going on, you know, the good thing about being popular and mm. attractive and mm -hmm. uh, likable, is so many people love you, yes. but then so many people see in you what they did not accomplish within themselves. Mm. And so instead of people looking and saying, this girl mm. is going through it, this man did something that hurt her, yeah. and I'm gonna pray for her. Yes. I got attacked, mm. you know? 
I had people truly like wanting to make it my fault of whatever he did. And wow. I think that for him, it was like, if I can't do anything else, I can at least try to defend her. Wow. You know, mm. I can at least try to at least say this because I'm, I'm getting it. How can you get it? How is it that you are attacked and you are the person that got, right. hurt, got hurt? You know, yeah. but I, I, I recognize that these are broken people mm -hmm. and hurt people want to hurt people. Yes. And when you're broken and you're hurt and, you know, it's like, oh, she portrayed this perfect life. I didn't portray a perfect life. I showed you highlights of my life. Yeah. And you portray. you said it was perfect. Mm -hmm. I never said that. Yeah. You know, I, I grew up in the South. My mom said house business is house business. Maybe. So let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. now, and let me tell you something else. I'm never going to truly share everything yeah. because I did, I wasn't raised that way. Mm -hmm. We was when we were really raised that way. And yeah. it's just it's in me. That's why I don't mm -hmm. do too many personal podcast that's yeah. why I don't do too many personal events it's mm -hmm. all business for me yeah. unless you're a really close friend yeah you know mm -hmm. and so I think that for him that's what I think he wanted to at least say let me defend yeah. her in this way that's the yeah. least I can do wow you yeah. know um so I know that definitely caught us all off guard because oh, yeah. I'm close to both of you yeah um Anthony's help renovate my home with his team yeah. and you two have built this amazing business together and I want to speak to that too. Um, I had called you one day before all this had happened. Yeah. And I said, um, hey, I was like, I'm looking for a general contractor. The one I had is like charging way too much. Mm -hmm. He said, oh, Anthony can do it. He's, he's got a team. I said, okay, cool. Then all this happened and we went to my, I went to Miami and you were mm -hmm. like, I'm coming. Yes. So <laughs> you like come and you, you were like, oh girl, I gotta get out of <laughs> here. And um, I was like, if you don't want me to work with him, let me know. He was like, no, I do not want him to lose any clients. Yeah. And in that moment, you were so broken, but your heart posture was still, I don't want to take anything away from this man. Absolutely. And I said, my God, like that spoke volumes to why I love you as my friend and the type of person that you are and the integrity that you have right. um, to be at your lowest, but still not want to see the person that caused the pain to you suffer in any kind of way. Right. And I was like, my goodness, I was like, if I could take anything away from this whole situation, it's just how you handled it yeah. with so much grace. You really did. And I, and I say that and I tell people, God has been carrying me, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. it's intentional. I remember when we went to that basketball game and I said, mm -hmm. I'm looking for a good church. Yeah. And you said, go to change church. Yeah. And I started going and I have been out of town. I've been out the country, mm -hmm. but I will either be on my cell phone and watch mm -hmm. it. I'll watch the replay or attend in person. And yeah. I think I want to say that diligence in getting really connected and having someone to be a vessel to mm -hmm. really give me that the give me that word yeah. and allow me to and want me to yearn for more so I research on my own and started mm -hmm. opening my own bible yeah. and ordering books and ordering things to help me mm -hmm. pray through mm -hmm. what I'm going through mm -hmm. um, I will say that is what has carried me through this cuz I tell people you can be you can literally be broke, but you cannot be broken, mm, right? Yeah. So as much as the situation broke me, it didn't break me. Oof, you know, that's a message. Yes. It did not break me. I was I was able to still function. You were, yeah. And um, I'm grateful for that. Yeah, yeah. that's beautiful. Um, during this journey, um, I know it's taken a lot of self reflection. What have you learned about Kiana through all this? I've learned that I can definitely be a little selfish. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to what I want and mm -hmm. how I see things. Mm -hmm. So actually being open to other people and make, allowing everyone to feel seen yeah. is something that's important to me. Um, I think also through this situation, what I've learned is you can, you can love people and you can have people close to you, yeah. but you have to be the alpha and the omega mm -hmm. of your own life and your own decisions. Yeah. And I've learned that I'm not easily influenced by mm -hmm. other people's You're opinions. Not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you can think what you want, but I'm going to do what I want. Yeah. And I love that about me because I know that at the end of this life that I have, mm -hmm. and I tell people this story all the time, you know, my dad, he passed away from cancer. He was only 52. Wow. And he did not, he had sarcoma cancer, sarcoma cancer was his cancer of the soft tissue. Mm. They removed a 17 pound tumor. He went through everything. Oh. He got better and then he immediately got worse and passed mm. away in, a, in like a year and a half, right? Oh my goodness. And he didn't want to suffer. Yeah. 
And at the end of his days, when I was spending time with him, he mm. reminded me mm. to live my life unapologetically. He reminded me that you need to make sure that you live this life for you. Yeah. And I'm reminded of that every time I have to make a difficult decision. Yes. Every time I have to face some adversity, mm -hmm. I'm like, this is my one life. Yeah. And if, as long as I'm internally happy mm -hmm. and I'm pleasing God, I don't care what you, you or you think mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing I learned is my strength in that. Mm -hmm. And then I want to say my best trait that I've learned is now I'm very intentional. Yeah. I am very intentional about checking in. You are. With everything I'm talking yeah. about from <laughs> spending time with my nieces, my nephew, my mom, oh, my friends. Yes. You know, even in my business, mm -hmm. um, making sure I, I feel like it softened me. Yeah. It's the situation has softened me. Mm. Like I check into my team more. Yeah. I check into everybody more because mm. I recognize that being that one, like being on that train yes. and just pushing forward, mm -hmm. it's a lonely ride yeah. if you don't have people with you. That is so true. That is so yeah. true. And with all that, what has this process taught you about forgiveness? I know that's a tough thing to do sometimes when you're the one that was hurt. I'm still forgiving. Mm. I'm still forgiving. Um, I give myself the grace, mm -hmm. but I do know this. The closer I get to the forgiveness part, mm -hmm. the lighter I feel. Ugh. The lighter, the mm -hmm. better my days are, yeah. right? You know, the easier it is for me to enjoy my life yeah. fully joy from within yes. right that glow that you can so it's like I can see that glow mm -hmm. it's coming because it is. I allow I'm allowing myself to say you have to forgive what mm. you can't forget and there was someone who actually gifted me a book really? and it said learning to forgive what you can't forget oh um and she gifted me this book and mm. I started to read it and I'm working to finish it yeah. and I plan to finish it through the holiday seasons mm -hmm. because what I recognize if you cannot truly forgive someone mm -hmm. how can you expect god to forgive you because none of us are perfect we have done imperfect mm. things in this world i have done so many imperfect things i have Same. made so many decisions yeah. that i feel like dang that was a terrible decision yeah. or i was a terrible friend or i was a terrible sister mm -hmm. or a terrible daughter mm -hmm. And if I want God to forgive me, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to forgive that person, right? Yeah. So forgiveness is one thing. Mm -hmm. And then reconciliation is another. Yeah. So I'm working on the forgiveness part now mm -hmm. because I got to forgive. Yeah. Or it's going to eat me up. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I don't want that. PD talked about that at church yeah. on Sunday saying yeah. that um, a lot of times forgiveness isn't about the other person. It's about your own healing. Yes. Yeah. It and is. that's so true. It is. Yeah. So forgiveness is something I'm still working on, yeah. but. It's a, it's, I take it a day at a time mm -hmm. and I recognize my feelings and mm -hmm. I talk through them. Right. And that has helped me towards that forgiveness journey. Yeah. So mm -hmm. good. Um, I think something that you, you and I both have discussed and that we have in common is that we're in our forties, but have not had children yet. Right. Um, do you feel like because your career was just taking off that that was something that you just put on the back burner or did you not even want to have children? What was the decision in that? It's, it's a lot of factors mm -hmm. in that. That's like a, that is a layered question. Yeah. I'll say when we when I first got married, I was on birth control. Mm -hmm. So most people assume, oh, she can't have kids. It's like, right. child, I was on the depo shot. Right. Before I got married, mm -hmm. I stayed on the depo shot. I didn't have a period for almost seven years because yeah. the depo shot took it away. Mm -hmm. And I was enjoying my life. So that's yeah. when I met my husband and when we were when we got mm -hmm. married. Yeah. So then when it was time to like, okay, do you want to have kids? So I get off the shot. Yes. And they get off the shot, they do all these tests. And it mm -hmm. took me a whole year and a half to start having a cycle again. Oh, wow. What did you have to do to start? Like, you just oh, had to wait? They just said you had to wait and you okay. had to take, it was like pro your progesterone levels were off and mm -hmm. all that stuff. Yeah. And so they were like, take these vitamins, take mm -hmm. that. And so then once everything started to even out, yeah. you know, we start having these tests. Mm -hmm. So we're taking tests, I'm getting my tests and he's getting his test mm -hmm. and i'll say with respect to a little bit of our privacy Absolutely. that it's always it's it's, it's it's sometimes it's both people or yeah. sometimes it's one person mm -hmm. it's the assumption is always that it's the woman yeah right mm -hmm. that's going to be the easiest thing to assume mm -hmm. yeah um but in my situation that's not the, the case right yeah, now right. you know my, my eggs are geriatric mm -hmm. they gonna tell you that child yes Listen, can i can i just say a disclaimer <laughs> if you are in your early mid-20s early 20s late early 30s 
and you say, I don't know if I want to have a child and you're financially able, please go freeze your eggs. Mm -hmm. Because by the time you get over 35, they will call them geriatric. I don't care how good you look. Mm -hmm. You can drink all the green tea, <laughs> eat all the salad. <laughs> <laughs> your eggs are geriatric. Yes. And, I um, hate that word. But it's true. They just, it just it's, it's true. It's like they literally just put me in the grave. I'm like, yes, they're, they're like, geriatric. You can't have, like, I'm like, oh my gosh. And so you, when, you, when that happens, I yeah. think that I came to terms with it. We yeah. went through an IVF cycle. It was unsuccessful. Yeah. And I was like, well, we have a beautiful life. You yep. love me. We have beautiful. a dog. We travel. I'm a great aunt. Yes. You know, you already have um, a daughter. Mm -hmm. So everything is beautiful. I don't, I'm indifferent. Yeah. I'm indifferent about having a kid now mm -hmm. because now I don't, I don't necessarily want to commit to going through the process again right. yeah. and, 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 and having that type of um, failure or blow come again. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So I would say it was a combination of all of it. And I came to that conclusion at the end, like, I don't, you know, as long as it's us, like, you know how like yeah. Mr. Big and Carrie was, it's like me and yes. you, just us two. Yes. I was, I was fine with that, you know, mm. and that's just the decision that yeah. is, it's a lot of, it's like I said, it's a lot of caveats that come mm -hmm. with that. Yes. There's a lot of layers mm -hmm. and, and in my situation, it is not just that my eggs are geriatric is the person that I want to conceive with also has some challenges. Yeah. And so that is how it all kind of yeah. rolls. Right. Did that affect you guys in any way or did you both agree like, we, we both we, we love each other. And we good. We both agreed mm -hmm. um, that we loved each other and we were good. And then it's like, but now as we're going through our challenges, yeah. it's, it's an it's like maybe we want to revisit it. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to see what can be done. Yeah. And so we shall see. Yeah, you know, that's good. <laughs> I love that. Um, I know a lot of people talk about freezing eggs, and you've gone through the whole in vitro process. Yes. What was that like? Because I've never done it. I'm actually scared. Mm -hmm. Cause I've heard a lot of different stories about it. I want to say if you're scared, if you're afraid of needles, you're going to have a hard time. And you feel, mm -hmm. I kind of felt like a, a lone scientist mm -hmm. because there are certain things you have to mix yourself. Oh it's, wow. Everything is not pre-mixed. So certain things you're going to have to watch a little video mm -hmm. and mix it and oh, wow. put it. Yeah. <laughs> so then when you get everything set up and you know, you get your, get into your flow and mm -hmm. you don't mind sticking yourself. Is it like a needle, like that's just poking it's, out? It's or is it, is it like, needle. is it inside a cartridge that you just punch? Or you, yeah, it's you, like it's a cartridge. Ne cartridge oh, okay, needle. so, so not the like, one where you can see the needle and you're like sticking it in yourself, yeah, you or it's like you just go like this and punch it. You just go like that and punch it. Okay, so you you're gonna have to punch it, and um, but it changed my one. Of course, I got bloated. Everybody, mm. I think they get bloated. Yeah, but beyond being bloated, it changed my temperament. Like mm. literally, I became a completely different temperament because. Again, when I'm in work mode yeah. and we had just launched Watson Realty Co mm -hmm. and I was having a team meeting and I am, I do not cry for real like that. Yeah. I started crying to my agent because I was like, this is my first agent. I'll never forget Kiara, mm -hmm. my very first admin. She's still my agent, been with yes. me to this day. And I was like, you have to sell at least this dollar amount. <laughs> it was a certain dollar amount I needed her to sell. <laughs> and I started crying oh. and, I did, and she was looking at me like, what, what is, is going on? <laughs> And I was like, like okay. is this even me? It's right. like watching you, yourself in an outer body experience right. and you're experiencing emotions that you know normally you wouldn't have. Um, and I think that those are the two, that will be the biggest thing. Yeah. Forget the bloating, I'll right. wear a bigger shirt, but not being able to control my emotions, mm -hmm. especially in the business field, yeah. that was the biggest thing that I would say, watch out for when mm. you go through it. Don't be in the position where you gotta make a lot of hard decisions quickly. Yeah, that's yeah. good. That's good. I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about um, Watson Realty Co. Okay. And how we met. Yes. Um, I met you in 2017 when I was purchasing my first home. Yes. And um, we were like four houses in now. Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you have been with me every step of the way and it's grown way past being my realtor. Um, but I remember not knowing anything. Yeah. They, my friend Siobhan, she was like, oh, my boyfriend yes. at the time, he knows um, a realtor. Her name is Kiana. And I was like, okay, well, give me your information. <laughs> is she black? And she was like, yes, yeah. like, perfect. <laughs> And um, we met and we ended up finding this townhouse that I just loved. Yes. And it ended up being um, one of your preferred lenders was their preferred lender. Yes. So we like didn't have any clothes. It was like $5,000 towards your closing costs. Yes. All these things were just lining up. And I remember we got to the house and um, the, guy, the person who was doing the open house said, well, somebody's already left to go get their earnest money. Kiana literally was like, all right, well, we'll wait. And she's like, actually, we're going to go get our earnest money. We're going to come back and we're going to wait. And the person never came back. So 
We gave him our earnest money. <laughs> yes. And while we, once we came back with the earnest check, um, you literally sat with me at that um, dining room table and read the entire contract with me so that I understood and explained it to me. Yes. Which makes sense why you do agents, agent tools for success now, because um, you want people to understand what they're signing up for. Absolutely. There were no, I, when I got the house, it was, first of all, it was seamless because of you, but I also learned so much during that process because you weren't just trying to get a check. No. And that was before you had your own brokerage, <laughs> yes. like, you know, so you always taking it serious. So um, for anybody who may be watching that wants yeah. to be a realtor, can you kind of walk me through the process of what even made you want to be a realtor oh, yeah. and what that journey was like? Okay. When I first got my real estate license, <clears throat> I just thought I'm just going to be successful. Mm -hmm. I'm good with people. I can make this work. Yeah. But it wasn't till I spent some time in property management that mm -hmm. I got a better understanding of reading through documents and interpret, interpreting those and running reports mm -hmm. and understanding the market. Mm -hmm. So when I really jumped into real estate full time, and that was in 2015, September mm -hmm. 2015, what I recognize is that I have a certain way that people trust me, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It's like people come around me and because I've always been hungry and not thirsty, and let me tell you the difference. Hey. Let me tell you the difference. The difference is I can take my time with you. I yes. can show you six houses. I can show you 10 houses. Mm -hmm. I can show you one. Um, and I can make sure you understand what yes. you're doing and understand every step of the way. And so I'm big on putting together processes. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, let me write this down so that way they can understand it. Or let me break this down in layman's terms. Yes. So in comparison to what they see on this contract, this makes sense to them. Mm -hmm. And I just started to run my business that way because you never know where someone is going to lead you. And I always tell people, start how you want to finish, yes. right? Start how you want to finish. And mm -hmm. so if you're a future, if you, I think for me, when it came to real estate, mm -hmm. I recognize that one, I, I love houses, mm -hmm. I love people mm -hmm. and I love winning. Yes. So when you have that salesmanship, mm -hmm. you're going to enjoy this business because it's beyond the customer service. The same way the woman there, she wanted us to increase our offer while mm -hmm. we were waiting for the other offer. She, yeah. And I'm like, I'm not going to increase nothing. Mm -mm. I'm going to save you some money so we can wait mm -hmm. here until the doors close at six. And now <laughs> the doors are closed. You're going to take this offer at this price Yes. and we, and everything worked out mm -hmm. so you gotta you have to enjoy sales yeah. and then you have to enjoy people yeah, yeah. well you definitely do and you made that <laughs> you made all the processes so seamless yes. um even i know i had um found a house on mount Perrin. well oh, tyler yeah. actually found the house oh lord and, <laughs> <laughs> and i said kiana was like tyler done found this house and she goes all right well let me find out who's um <laughs> whose who's listing it is and we went and looked at it and you're like it's gonna be a lot of work <laughs> i was like hmm okay <laughs> a lot <laughs> a lot of work and then nine months later I was like I can't do this anymore because we got the house and yeah. it was taking forever to get permits and um I called Tyler and I said hey I think I found the house I like and he's like well send me pictures of it so I sent pictures yes and then he goes go get your house I'll buy the other house girl and I said Keon I said I want to go look at this house she's like let's go let's go and within like every time I call you because I'm, I'm the type of person where I may need to see it a few times every time I call you you were right there or if oh, yeah. T needed to see it, you're like, oh, I'm there. And it was another house. In we had already- It was another one in the middle. Had the offer on yes. <laughs> And we over there still looking at houses, a whole nother house. A whole That nother. house was beautiful. That though. was beautiful. It was just positioned wrong, yes. but it was gorgeous. We already it had an gorgeous. offer on the other house. Yeah, under contract, I believe. We was <laughs> under contract. <laughs> I was like, this girl is crazy. But at the same crazy. time, I also recognize, I know I know Georgia law. Mm -hmm. I know we're within the time period that mm -hmm. she can get her earnest money yeah. back. So if you're going to have second thoughts, you need to have them right now yes. before we get past this contingency, which is mm -hmm. called the due diligence period, if you guys want to know. Yes. So in the state of Georgia only, is that's the only time on the person and sell agreement that you can terminate without cause. That means you can get your earnest money mm -hmm. back. You don't have to have a reason. Wow. So I knew we needed that. Yeah. And I and I felt like this is such a huge purchase, mm -hmm. you know. So you want to be as you want to be extremely sure. happy yeah. and extremely sure about that decision. Exactly. Um so it was it was but it's always good touring with you guys. Yeah. And oh my god, when Tyler shows up, it's just hilarious. <laughs> No, it is so oh, funny. Tyler Perry, Mr. Perry, Mr. I like to call him Mr. Perry. I'm like, Tyler, it's hilarious because he has on all this stuff. 
Like, <laughs> Nobody so, knows who he is. Yeah, like he's, and then the guy, we leave, and they're like, is that Ma the Medea guy? <laughs> right. I was like, oh my gosh. And I'm thinking to myself, you may, may, maybe, you maybe not. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, he needs to be a realtor at this point. No, seriously. Yes. Well, you know, his first passion was um, architecture, so. Yes. When we went to that house, he literally sat in his, in his car, pulled out a piece of typing paper, and started drawing up the plans, and he was like, this is what I want the house to look like to yeah. his architect. And I was like... I don't like this house, but I like what you just drew. So yeah, like, we, I, but I wouldn't be here. Yeah, this is where I want to be. You can make this look like this, then we're good. <laughs> but um, you've always been there. I just, I just love that. Now, when it comes to actually running your own brokerage, uh -huh. getting to this alpha woman that you are, what is that like? Because you, you have a beautiful office. You have yes. so many amazing ladies that work under you, that you mentor, that look up to you yeah. with such um, adoration. What is that like on a day-to-day -day basis, knowing that you have all these women that are depending on you and your guidance to succeed and knowing that you, this business has your name on the, on the front door? It's a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. You know, I had someone ask me, um, it was like, it looks like you can't, like you've changed. And I'm like, you have to change. Yeah. When your level of responsibility changes mm -hmm. to whom much is um, given, much is required, yeah. you cannot move and operate the same way. You have to be mindful of what you've built, who's looking mm -hmm. to you. And these, the agents that work for me, they're full time. Most of them are full time. And so under my tutelage, mm -hmm. under my brokerage, mm -hmm. they're feeding their families, they're taking care of themselves. Mm -hmm. And what I found is I have, I make sure that I cross my T's and I dot my I's like I've always done. Yeah. So instead of doing that like with a contract mm -hmm. like I did with you, mm -hmm. I do that when it comes to my business. Yes. I want to make sure we have the right training, the right resources. Mm -hmm. um, they're getting the right leadership and they know that they can, they're looking to someone that not only has done the work, yeah. but encourages them throughout mm -hmm. the process. Yeah. And that is what's so important in leadership. People, mm -hmm. um, you have to lead from the front. Yes. yes when so you true. lead from the front, people will absolutely follow mm -hmm. and um that pressure is you know pressure sometimes bursts pipes right because mm -hmm. sometimes it's like yeah i just want to be soft baby yes. <laughs> i don't want to worry about none of this right y'all go write them emails emails read yourselves right. and write yourself but it oh, like just closing the, the laptop slap, slams the slap <laughs> laptop shut right i sometimes some days it is like that yeah. because you're like whoa but at the end of the day it's rewarding to know that you what you worked extremely hard for mm -hmm. is now coming to fruition and yeah. it's being successful and people are receiving it mm -hmm. well. So that is um, something that I just, day to day, mm -hmm. I manage it. Yeah. yeah. Now what is it like having to fire somebody, being the boss? Cause I know you grow mm -hmm. so close to these women oh, yeah. and you care about them. What is that, putting that hat on like? Okay, so th I've had to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not directly a fire because, mm -hmm. well, well this, this is two parts. Okay, mm -hmm. I've had to fire some assistants. Those are people that have worked for me. Mm -hmm. An agent, you just kind of dissolve the relationship because they're okay. independent contractors. Mm -hmm. You can say, listen, I just don't, I no longer want to hold your license here. Yeah. And I made that tough decision. Um, as I was growing this brokerage at the top of the year, mm -hmm. I was like, next thing, I blinked and I had like 60 agents. What? I'm like. How did this happen, right? Because everybody wanted to work with the <laughs> Kiana Watson. And so there are people coming from other team, people I recruited, because yeah. I was thinking this, I just get more agents mm -hmm. and you know, I'm gonna do less work. And yeah. at the same time, as I'm growing more agents, I'm getting all these development relationships, yes. right? So now I'm representing subdivisions. It's no mm -hmm. longer one house. Can we talk now about it's, that? Did you say that again? It's, it's now, it's, it's no longer one house, it's a subdivision, Yes, right? you better So now have. it's like 10 houses, you need to list this, 15 house community. You need to list this enclave of six houses wow. and they're all new construction. It's a great developer. Mm. Thank you to Delphine yes. and Nick and brothers. Yes. And through that relationship, I now I have like eight different developers mm. that I work mm. with. And um, I said, oh, I'm being, and I'm very aware of who I am. And yeah. I said, okay, I am being pulled. Mm. I'm being pulled in a whole lot of directions mm -hmm. because now I have all these agents with me mm -hmm. and they have their demands. Mm -hmm. I have my online training academy that has its demands. Yes. I have my own book of business. Mm -hmm. That's a demand. Yeah. I have the Q Watson team. That's a demand. Goodness. And then I have Watson Realty Co. and all that. Yeah. And I said, you know, I can't, I have to first evaluate what brings me the most joy. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, what brings me the most income. Yeah. Joy and income was the first two things that, mm -hmm. that I calculated. Mm -hmm. And I said, I have to, I'm going to have to trim this fat. 
Yeah, and they were producing agents. Mm -hmm. They were they were producing agents. Mm -hmm. Shout out to all of them. Yeah. Um, I'm still really good, cool, cool with a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And some of them, I want to say this directly. I don't want you to feel away. It's, it comes to the point where you have to put your own oxygen mask on first. Yep. And when I recognize I'm getting these development relationships, mm -hmm. I can't not build this part of my business yeah. and cater to the demands that is that they feel are necessary. Mm -hmm to be a leader yeah. in this part of the business. Mm -hmm. So I made the tough decision to release them yeah. um, respectfully. And I did it in such a respectful way. I gave them back all their listings. Most eight, most brokers, when you write a contract with the brokerage, mm -hmm. even if you leave, that contract is in the name of the brokerage and they get wow. to keep it. Wow. And they can release you and keep your contracts. Mm. They can keep your buyers. They can keep your sellers. It doesn't belong to you. Because you so license. let's just say you work with me. Yeah. You get two, two, 10 people under contract mm -hmm. and it's under Watson Realty Co. And I say, you know what, Crystal, you can no longer work with us. You have to leave. You can, I can release your license. And those are technically my contracts. Wow. But that is, that's how the law works. That's mm -hmm. why it's a brokerage. Mm -hmm. It's a pass through. Yeah. Um, and I gave everybody all their deals. Integrity. Back. I gave, you I gave if, as long as it enclosed with like within three days of yeah. them leaving, I gave them all their deals back. And um, I, I did it in the mo the best way, but it yeah. wasn't about them. I think that people always want everything to be about them. It mm -hmm. was about me. Yeah. I have worked extremely hard in this capacity, mm -hmm. in this career. Yeah. And this happened before I thought, before the relationship issues came. Okay, mm -hmm. honey, let me make that clear. Because everybody's like, oh, she had relationship issues. She let go of these agents. Right. Oh, my. Man, people let me tell you something. Anything. The agents got let go before I, I, I before the relationship issues r transpired. Right. Yeah. The, I released the agents because mm -hmm. I had to choose me. I said, I am not going to be strong stretched thin in this season. I remember I, that. I can't do it. Mm -hmm. I want to enjoy my life. I want to enjoy the people that love me. And if yeah. I continue to stretch myself thin, I won't have anything left for me. Yeah. So I just made the decision to choose mm -hmm. again, which, which gave me what gave me the most joy and which gave me the most income. Mm -hmm. I love that. We mm -hmm. talked about um, the industry being such a male dominated industry that you work in. And for alpha women, when men are alpha, alpha men, they are um, successful. They're the, the most successful out of the group. They're a, le a leader, a breadwinner. But when women are the alpha female, then it's, oh, she's a bitch. She's vicious. Yes. She's cold. Um, what has it been like navigating those areas? I feel like as women, like I said, that's why I say when you say that word alpha, mm -hmm. that just means leader. That doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily mean I'm cold. Yeah. But in certain aspects of my business, mm -hmm. it can it can feel cold. Yeah. Um, when I had to send those emails to release those agents, mm -hmm. it could it, it I'm pretty sure it felt cold. Yeah. Because I but at the same time it was direct assert and assertive mm -hmm. for the situation it was, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that we have to be mindful that you cannot run a business like you run your personal life. No, you can't. What Beyonce say, she said in business, being polite does not mix. Yeah. But she did say you can be fair. Mm -hmm. But when you're when you're out here being polite, you're yeah. being unfair to yourself. Mm. And I have learned that You heard it? In business, <laughs> in business, you cannot always just be polite mm -hmm. to people. Yeah. You have to be fair and stand in your bit, stand strong in your integrity, yeah. and move forward. I love that. Oh my goodness, um, I want to ask Kiana, with everything that you've gone through in the year of 2023. Yes, what are you going to do different in 2024, and how do you want to move forward? In 2024. I want to continue to really nurture my relationship with God. Mm -hmm. I want I want to be so in tune with God that I hear his voice mm. very clearly. So when he tells me to move, I move. Yeah. I want to move slower. Mm -hmm. mm. I am an intentional person. Mm -hmm. And if I don't like something or if something is not going the way that Kiana says it should go, I quickly disassociate and mm. I quickly make decisions and I don't, when I, that's another thing. You mm -hmm. cannot run your personal life like I would make the same decisions in my business life. That's good. Ooh. So I want to go into 2024 slowing down, yeah. like not being so quick mm -hmm. to decide. And I want to spend more time enjoying yeah. um, the little things. I think that I got so caught up, like, I want to go to Central Pay, went to Central Pay. Mm -hmm. I want to go to Italy, went to Italy. Yeah. I want to go this, you know, I got to be on this big boat. I did right. that. <laughs> I did it now. Yep. I definitely did it. She did I went it. to Paris at least three times. Hello. Right. In but Amsterdam. In or Amsterdam. I just, or I just want to go have chicken wings in Amsterdam. All of that, right? <laughs> but I Oh, not only, you know, let's, let's not forget being the VIP risers and Yo. watch Beyonce with your friend Crystal. 
Bet y'all didn't go see Beyonce like that. I bet y'all didn't. But I want to do more of the small things. I yeah. want to be able to have um, like intentional lunches like we did the other yes. day with my friends and not let it, it doesn't everything doesn't have to be a photo op or a video mm -hmm. op right spend yeah we didn't even we, take pictures we didn't take we, we, we spent yeah. a lot of time together and we don't take pictures mm -hmm. we only take pictures at the events because yeah. again we're on the stage we're remember? on the stage yes but we know we have a personal relationship this is real. we have nothing to prove because mm -hmm. we call each other all the time yeah. you have my real personal number not Honey. just the public business hello number, okay? i got kiana business <laughs> and kiana personal and so um <laughs> i want to spend more time i want to spend more time with friends and mm -hmm. family That's i want beautiful. to enjoy more of the little things mm -hmm. and still sprinkle in a lot of the big things yeah. yeah well i just want you to know that i'm so proud of you um i'm you're constantly in my prayers Thank you. i um i'm one of those friends that i'm cheering you on and i, always, I hope that you feel the support and that i only want you to be happy and whatever that looks like for kiana absolutely yeah. you are one of the most non-judgmental pe judgmental people but you also are very much so like i, I heard you mm -hmm. And then you you give me your opinion without it being a judgmental yeah. opinion. Mm -hmm. People really can't help themselves mm -hmm. when it, it takes a certain special type of person to be able to give an opinion that's not biased yeah. or based on their own experiences, mm -hmm. but and that's coming from a true do. place. Yeah. Um, so I appreciate that and I feel that love and mm -hmm. I hope that you feel the same. I do. I'm always supporting you. Yes. I'll, you know, I'll probably be watching your show. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be watching Thank your show, you. but beyond that, I'm always just rooting for you yeah. and your greatness. You know, I you know I love watching the show. I, I called her one day, and I'm not going to say what happened, <laughs> but I said I watched this episode, and I think you need to take this date. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, I, I, I won't. I won't ever. I won't. You did. Because the thing about it, you have built, and guess what? You can have it all, mm -hmm. but maybe not at the not at all at the same time. I've so think about that. this hiatus because I think you do there are some things had to take a sacrifice yes and I'm learning that and you so know? you've done all the hard work yeah you're on you know how much you have to work and when it's mm -hmm. gonna be done you don't mm -hmm. have to overexert yourself yeah and you could focus on a relationship if that's what you choose okay <laughs> or you can be or you can be you could be a walking halo walking um fake filter <laughs> <laughs> and just and let everybody see your greatness but whatever that whatever it is that you want out of this life I support it thank you so much sis oh my goodness <laughs> Kiana thank you thank you thank you so much love you I love you oh, so much oh. um, now we are going to do one of my favorite parts is positive outcomes okay where our listeners write into us and we give them advice okay all right so this one says hi crystal I recently turned 41 this year with no kids and I've been working in education since the age of 13. Mm. my career is going great I brought my first home at the age of 39 and I'm very independent I absolutely hate depending on a man to do anything for me my dad taught me how to change my own tires and brakes Ooh, girl. Mm. okay girl. all right I don't even know how to do that. <laughs> However, my hyper-independence has caused a lot of confusion in past relationships. Should I just play the damsel in distress, which would literally irk my nerves? Help a sister out. Well, first of all, um, I've had to learn this because I was single for so long that when I did have a man in my life, I didn't know how to allow him to lead. I didn't know how to let him do things like if I did get a flat tire I yeah. was just so used to handling everything on my own that I didn't make the man feel needed mm -hmm. and I don't think you have to be a damsel in distress because I feel like if you play that role eventually it's going to get on the man's nerves yes of course yeah but um I do know that it's important to let the man feel like he is needed in the relationship let me tell you something mm. oh I remember I did this podcast y'all uh -huh. and I was on the stage with um, my prior relationship, and I said, I don't need a man. I want you as my man. Mm -hmm. now, I said that. I meant it when I said yeah. it, because in my mind, I'm thinking, tell you that you're wanted. Yes. It's going to elevate. Mm -hmm. Like It's like it's a up in the ante. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but for a man, it's like, oh, you don't need me? It's a different thing. I would say you got to learn to let these men lead, and you need to be the damsel in distress. I can t With my past relationship and us trying to work through it, the first thing I said is I want to be a pampered princess. I can't figure out nothing. Darling, I don't know Make how to the turn plan. the shower on. Tell me what time to show up. <laughs> I don't care. Like, I don't want to be in charge of the tickets. 
Yes. Where, wherever you decide we sit, that's where we sit, mm -hmm. right? Because see, sometimes we can get like that too. As women, we're like, uh, -uh I want to sit on this row at this section. Yes. Sit first, this. But sometimes if let let the man lead and whatever they can do mm -hmm. and however they want to do Ooh, it, that's good. let them do it and show up and be happy for it. Yes. Because they didn't have to do it. They mm -hmm. didn't have to plan a date for you. Yeah. They didn't have to plan this. So mm. instead, maybe they planned a picnic, but you wanted to go and have five strips of Wagyu with extra truffle. Yeah. Relax. <laughs> I think relax. That, relax and read the room. And yeah. I think that if I could give her any advice, mm -hmm. I would say, you say that you don't need a man, but let's be clear, you don't need a man maybe for your financial support yes. or for that physical support since the girl can change a tire and, mm -hmm. and, and change some brakes. brakes. That's but crazy. But that <laughs> emotional support of a man, mm -hmm. mm. no girlfriend can feel it. Yeah. No, A man can't fulfill that emotional support from your girlfriends yeah. and your family, mm -hmm. that love, each of those love pockets are different. Mm -hmm. And that love pocket from a man, mm -hmm. you do need that. Yeah. So I had to recant my message. I do need a man. Mm -hmm. I want a man and I need a man. Hey, hey. I want that emotional support. I want that love pocket mm -hmm. feel. Yeah. You need to really think about that and stop saying that you don't mm -hmm. so you can get what you need and live your life. Oh, I'm taking that, that advice, Kiana, because I definitely have said um, I don't need a man, yeah. but I want one. And I feel and I thought the same thing. I thought that when I say I want you, it's a choice that I'm making that I want you. Yes. And I thought that meant something. They want to feel needed. Yes, oh, they do. That's so good. Thank you so much for writing in. And please take her advice because I'm going to take it. <laughs> <laughs> The next thing we do is what I'm going through and what I'm growing through. Okay. And just off of what we talked about, I am I definitely need to work on allowing men to lead when yes. I do have that opportunity again. Allowing them to lead, um, not being in control to what you said um, about I need to sit on this row. I want my wagyu with the extra truffle. Mm -hmm. um, I want to go this way. I want to drive this kind of car. Like want to fly first class, I want to stay in this kind of hotel, like, I have all these things that this is what I like. I have to allow the man to lead. Yes. And um, preparing myself, I think those are things I need to work on so that when the next one comes, I can be ready. I absolutely think so. Yeah. Um, I think it's a beautiful thing to allow a man to lead. Mm -hmm. And if you, like my aunt told me, I had to go, had to go talk to my old school aunt. I know that's right. And she, um, as I'm dealing with and going, growing through with, I'm growing through, and yeah. they were like, you know, the man is the head, but the woman controls the neck. And she said, Kiana, if you want a man, if you, if you control in the neck, mm -hmm. they're going to turn whatever way that you're controlling. And man, and mm. men are controlled with nurturing. Mm. They're con with love and nurturing and femininity. Yeah. You'll get more. Yeah. Instead of demanding. And I bet you you'll still end up having the Wagyu mm -hmm. with the extra truffle if they have to work two jobs mm -hmm. to make sure you get it. Wow. Because now you're controlling the neck and they want to do it for you. Yes, that's beautiful. Yeah. Free game, y'all. <laughs> she just gave it to you. That's so good. Yeah. So what are you going through and growing through? I would say I'm going through my personal relationship battles. Mm -hmm and um, really try to make sure I find the light in that, mm -hmm. whatever, however that turns out, right? Yeah. And being okay with knowing that I'm allowing God to grow me through this situation. Mm -hmm. So I feel like even in that growth, I'm going through it, but I'm growing through it. Yeah. Because at the end of all of this, I'm going to be a much better woman. Absolutely. And that is an overall woman to mm -hmm. a mate, to a friend, to yeah. a better daughter, better sister, better mm -hmm. aunt. So, you know, I feel like situations happen sometimes to really humble you yeah. and to make, make you look in the mirror and say, you know, maybe you are not as together as you thought. Wow. And um, that's what I'm growing through right now. It's so beautiful. Yeah. I love it. Ah. Um, before we close out, we do what is called Keep It Blank, Sweetie. Okay. And when I think of you, I think of Keep It... Ooh... Keep it private, sweetie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Certain things, just keep it to yourself. Um, there's things to share because you want to help other people learn and grow through their experiences mm -hmm. based off of what you've, you've dealt with. Um, but there are some things where you say, I'm just going to keep to myself. I like yeah. that. 
Yeah, I love that. I, I'm in that season. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. definitely keep it private, sweetie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and th th I don't think it's anything wrong with that. Yeah. What can you really think about it? What you really love, you protect. You do. And what you truly love and you care about, you protect. Mm -hmm. If you see me with my nieces, I'll say, send you a picture yes. of me yours. Yeah, you see all of my mom playing. How often have you seen them on my social media page? Same. So that's why I just asked the other day, did I have any siblings? Because I don't post. You know why I don't? Yeah. Because I really love them and I want to protect them. Yeah. And I realize that there are so many outside forces that I don't have control of. And mm -hmm. they didn't ask for this type of platform. Yes. They didn't ask for these people to take a screenshot of them mm -hmm. and try to criticize them. So I pr you protect what you love, mm -hmm. and that can be friendships. Yeah. So even though we may not post each other all the time, mm -hmm. every single meetup, yeah. we know what we have. And, and we we are probably post a picture and mm -hmm. say, hey, we went to this event. Yeah. But every single meetup is not a photo op. It's Some things that you absolutely love and you trust, you mm -hmm. keep close to you. Yes. Keep it to yourself. That's so good. Yeah. What would you say? Keep it blank, sweetie. Mm, I'm going to say... Keep it real, sweetie. Oh. You heard it. <laughs> keep it real, I sweetie. Love it. I <laughs> I'm love in that it. space where I'm keeping it real with myself. I'm keeping it real with people that are around me. Mm -hmm. And by keeping it real with yourself, people are forced to accept you for mm -hmm. who you are yeah. because you are no longer walking around with some mask. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? A mask that you walk around with will always eventually fall off. Yeah. So keep it real, sweetie. I love that. That is so good. Kiana, yeah. thank you so much. Thank you. I'm so, so proud of you. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Keep It Positive, sweetie. If you want to write into our Positive Outcomes listener letter, you can write into keepitpositivesweetie at gmail.com, and that's sweetie with an I-E. You can follow Kips on all platforms at Keep It Positive, sweetie, and you can follow me on all platforms at L-U-V Crystal Renee. Kiana, tell the people where they can find you. You can find me at KianaWatson.com, Kiana Watson on Instagram, Kiana Watson on um, social media, and of course, Watson Realty Co. That's my real estate brokerage here in the metro Atlanta area. Any of the 25 agents can service you. And then my online training academy for those that are looking for guidance and growing your real estate careers, go to agentswhosforsuccess.net. And um, you can find me on all those platforms. Yes. And if you want to learn more about Kiana, she has a book. I forgot to say that you're also an author. Oh, yes. Yes. Clear to Close. Um, we were talking about how beautiful you were on the cover. Thank you. But yes, um, give us more insight on her life and um, everything that it took to get to where you are today. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so we couldn't get it all, I in, couldn't one, get it all in, in an hour, but you can purchase the book as well yes. and learn so much more about this amazing woman that I'm so honored to call my friend. You are such a great friend. I love friend. you. I love you more. <laughs> Thank you for knowing this, this is a safe space, Absolutely. for sharing your story. And I know so many women are going to be healed from this. I pray for I that. I love you. I love you. Yes, Bye. so good. Dear God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for waking us up. Thank you for your mercies, dear God. I ask that you continue to allow us to reach everyone with this podcast, spreading more positivity into the world, dear God. I ask that you use me and Kiana. We know that so many people look up to us and look to us for inspiration and light, dear God. But I want to shed truth. I want to shed some love today. I want people to see the authentic us um, to get, let them know that we are just like them, dear God. Thank you for Denora. Thank you for her guidance. Thank you for the anointing that you have in our life, dear God. God bless YM. Thank you for his talents. Thank you for allowing him to be a part of this family. Dear God, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.